I'm Sean Worthington, and I'd like to tell you about the RADA. The RADA is a new data structure that protects us from what I call the haters, the hackers, the system administrators, artificial intelligence, governments, and tech giants. Those people who might try to shut us down, shut us up, and keep us from getting to our own data and controlling our own data. This RADA allows us to store data in such a way that it is protected and to also transfer data in that same way. It also gives us the ability to create digital currencies. These digital currencies are lightning fast, scalable to the entire globe, 100% private, absolutely efficient and free to use, and they can be recovered if lost. And that's just scratching the surface. The way that it works is that it mimics the root DNS service. There's something called the root DNS service, and this is a service that you probably use thousands of times every day, the domain name system, DNS. When you go to your browser and you type in a URL, like www, do a lookup, it will look for that IP address using the DNS server system. This process takes milliseconds. It's free and it's never gone down since it was created in 1985. Now parts of it have gone down like local parts, but not the entire system and not the root DNS servers. And the way that it works is by using a system of redundancy. We start by having 12 independent operators. These are different companies and organizations that are designated the ones that can have these root servers. And to begin with, they were all American organizations. Over time, they started to spread out to other countries. And uh, now we have uh, quite a few different countries involved. There are 13 root servers run by 12 independent organizations. These servers have names. They're named A through M. So very simple names. And each server has hundreds or a hundred or more mirrors. All of these servers basically contain the same information. So we've got a thousand servers or more that have the same data on it but they're run by different people and different organizations. And they're located in different areas of the world, different jurisdictions, different climates. It is impossible for these servers to go down because they have no systemic risk of failure. The code that runs on them is all different. The uh, organizations that run them are different. If one organization decided that they were going to try to get rid of the .com or kick some people off the .com, they could not do that because the other ones would have that information and we could simply choose to use those ones instead. If we take a look at here in the United States where we've got these some root servers, here in San Jose, you can see that we've got lots of different root servers that, uh, that answer our requests. And if we go over to another part of the world, we'll see that, again, these same root servers are mirrored. Um, why do we have E, F, I, D, K? Why don't we just have all E's? Well, that's so that we have no systemic risk of failure. We have different organizations that are administering each one of these. Now, these servers are very inexpensive to operate. And the people that administer them want to volunteer and do it because it's an honor to be able to have these servers. So if I'm a university, I might want to have one of these DNS root servers because it's, it's, it's a neat thing to do. If there was a nuclear strike, it would not stop the DNS system. 
if the, if the hackers in China decided to take down the DNS system, they could not do it. If Google and Facebook and Microsoft, the tech giants, got together and decided they were going to stop the DNS, they couldn't do it. If a government like the United States of America said no more DNS or that we want to change the records, they could not do that with the root servers. This gives the DNS data supremacy. And again, they're immune from the attacks of the haters. Besides the root DNS, there's only two other databases in the world that have data supremacy. One of those databases is called the blockchain, and you've probably heard of it because there's so much investment going on right now in the blockchain domain. The blockchain is able to store data and make sure that if any changes are made, that those changes can be detected. And so the data that's in the blockchain is historic. It's a database that allows us to read from it. It allows us to write from it, but we cannot delete records from it and we cannot change records. So it's like a database that only can read and write. The RADA, however, is the next uh, data structure with data supremacy. So we've got two in the world, uh, three in the world, the root DNS, the blockchain, and the RADA. The RADA, again, is based on the DNS servers. But instead of having 12 independent organizations, the RADA has 25. And the RADA is not exactly the same in that it does not contain the exact data. Every RADA has different and unique data, and that could be because uh, it has different passwords. So with CloudCoin, CloudCoin has 25 different passwords, one for each RADA, and when we authenticate, we authenticate in parallel. The RADAs do not have to talk to each other. They have their own data, their own protocols, their own software, and they respond either authentic or not authentic. And they don't need to communicate with each other to do that, so they are independent. Or the user could stripe data across the RADA. And so I could take a document, say a Word document, and I could stripe it byte by byte into 25 different chunks and send each one of those chunks to a different RADA. Then, if one of the RADA administrators decided that they wanted to read my document, well, they could not because they'd only have 1 25th of it. And if one of the RADA, RADA administrators decided that they wanted to steal my coins, well, they could not because they would only have 1 25th of that, that information. Now, the biggest criticism that I hear of CloudCoin or the RADA is that there's only 25 and that that is a small number and that that is a, a vulnerable number. But the fact is, is that is plenty enough. However, to make things more secure and to answer this concern, we are expanding the RADA so that it has 32 shards so that each of the 25 servers, or each of the 25 stripes can be sharded into 32 different shards so that there will now be 800 RADA servers. This amount of servers is completely overkill <laughs> and will make the RADA completely invincible to any kind of attacks. Uh, we know by experience that the root DNS servers are going to stay up forever. The, boot, uh, the uh, blockchain does not have the same track record. In fact, the blockchain now faces a very threatening obstacle. That is called quantum computers. Quantum computers are designed to solve very tough questions, including questions that have to deal with factoring prime numbers. Cryptocurrencies depend on the inability to factor prime numbers. 
with quantum computers coming along, those prime numbers can be factored in a matter of minutes. Now you might think, well, maybe we can just make the keys larger, but it doesn't work like that. The quantum computers have an algorithm, and once they, uh, they, they get to, 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 to get that algorithm working, it doesn't matter how big that number gets. They can do it quickly. And there might be some other things that the blockchain might want to use. Those techniques will require more electricity and will cause the blockchain to become less efficient and more expensive. The rate, however, does not depend on encryption. It basically does the equivalent of shredding. And you cannot decrypt a shredded document unless you have all the shreds. And these shreds that the RADA has is spread out all over the world in different jurisdictions. No quantum computer can bring those things together and hack them. That makes uh, the RADA quantum safe. Now, we do make calls to the RADA. We send calls out. These go out into 25 different packets, and in theory, it is unlikely that somebody would be able to catch all 25. But if they did, we use AES encryption. AES encryption is not SSL encryption that's public. AES is a type of encryption that is quantum safe. And AES is the same kind of encryption that the United States government uses. We also have the ability to use other encryption standards uh, in, in fact, uh, the RADA is capable of using any kind of encryption that we want to put in there. The RADA will survive quantum computers. The blockchain will not. And in fact, it could be that the RADA could be the only way, after quantum computers, that we can truly communicate. Because if we take a look at the way it works, we've got a cloud coin that cloud coin has 25 authenticity numbers. These authenticity numbers are huge, 16-byte, uh, global, globally unique identifiers, and they can be used as keys, shared secrets between the RADA and the person that's got the cloud coin. If I can talk to the cloud, uh, the RADA encrypted, I can give it information to get tickets and I can use those tickets to encrypt other messages that I send to other people. And those uh, messages also are quantum safe and cannot be cracked. So the rate is very important. And it's important that you understand that it is uh, the third structure that's got data supremacy. It's going to allow us to have the most perfect currencies possible. It's gonna allow us to have privacy it's going to allow us to have web applications that cannot be taken down by anybody. That includes email, storage systems, uh, sites that do social, um, social websites such as Facebook type things or Twitter type things or YouTube type things. We're going to be able to create websites and applications that will stop canceling, uh, will, will, will promote and protect freedom of speech and protect our privacy. Thank you very much for listening to me and learning about the radar.